Welcome to another Electronics and More video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you another very useful circuit that you can make. The schematic for the device you see right here was found over at discovercircuits.com. It's a very cool website. There's a lot of schematics, so be sure to check it out. I'll place a link to the schematic for this device in the video description area. The circuit was designed by David Johnson. What the circuit is designed to do, if you have a plastic pipe that's buried in the ground, it could be an electrical non-metallic tube, it could be a PVC pipe for plumbing, it could be buried in the earth outside, or the pipe can be buried under a concrete slab. There may come a time where you would like to tap into an existing line, and this circuit here is going to help you do that very easily by pinpointing the location of that pipe. Not only are you going to need the circuit that I'm about to show you, you're also going to need an inexpensive and very small pocket AM radio like you see here. I only paid a few dollars for this one and you can pick these up on eBay. You can also find a compact AM FM radio like you see here at GearBest's website, banggood.com, as well as AliExpress. The radio I have here does work really, really good. It is definitely sensitive enough for the circuit. You do not need better. You can also plug in your earbuds using the eighth inch jack on the side of this radio. Doing so will allow you to hear very subtle changes in the audio when locating a pipe. The length of wire that you're going to insert into the pipe could be pretty much whatever you want. I have around 18 feet. You can go longer if necessary. The project housing is a Radio Shack project box, the smallest one they sell. The circuit I'm going to show you does not show the power indicator. And it does not have the on off push button. Over here I have a knob on the potentiometer. Let me show you the circuit. You're now looking at Dave's circuit. Remember the link to this schematic will be located in the video description area. The circuit uses TLC 555 timers. Keep in mind, these are not ordinary 555 ICs. These are the CMOS low power, high frequency 555s. There's two of them. Ordinary 555 timers only allow a frequency range up to around 300 to 350 kilohertz. Over here you take a look at the radio and you can see it operates between 500 kilohertz and around 1.6 megahertz or 1600 kilohertz. The CMOS 555 timer is designed up to 2 megahertz or 2000 kilohertz which puts us right in the AM band that we're going to be using to locate the wire loop. The circuit is very easy to put together. It operates off 9 volts, a 9 volt battery, total current drain around 25 milliamps, and all the components can be soldered to a prototype board. The circuit is comprised of two oscillators. This is a 1 kilohertz, and the second one is the important one, which determines the output frequency. This says 530 kilohertz oscillator. That value can vary depending on the setting of the potentiometer. This is a 2.7 K ohm fixed resistor. Over here, you can use a 1 K potentiometer. In my case, I had a whole bunch of 2 K potentiometers laying around, so that is exactly what I used. Varying the value of the resistor here affects the output frequency on pin 3. The 10 microfarad capacitors are used to add stability to the power rail. Over here, the 9 volt battery goes through a 100 ohm fixed resistor. You have another capacitor here, a 0.1 or a 104 cap, non-polar. After the 100 ohm resistor, it's going to go to the loop of wire. Now the loop of wire is nothing but one length of 18 gauge wire, like you see right here. All right. And you notice the end of the wire, both leads are soldered together, and that is what creates the loop you see right here. 
the output of that 555 timer goes into the gate of a 2N7000. Over here you can see the top view. Now if you're looking at the bottom view with the legs facing you, then it's going to be source gate drain. Looking down at it through the component to see the legs on the bottom, it's going to be drain gate source. There's not a lot of current coming off of pin 3, so you're definitely going to have to use the 2N7000 or a BS170. The range is very impressive, 3 to 5 feet away from the wire, and the closer you get to the wire, the louder the tone becomes, and the further away, the quieter the tone. So it's very easy to pinpoint the location of a pipe with the wire inside of it. This will not work on metal pipes. The metal will act as a shielding around the loop. You will not get the signal passing through the pipe. So only plastic pipes will work with this circuit. If you would like to lessen that signal because you feel it's way too strong, you can leave the 100 ohm resistor where it is, and in series with that fixed resistor, you can add a 500 ohm pot, and then let that go into the loop, through the drain, out the source, and to battery negative. You'll be able to adjust the power level, and doing so will make it easier to pinpoint the location of the pipe. Let me unscrew my project box and show you what the circuit looks like inside the Radio Shack project box. Okay, let me remove the cover now that the screws have been unscrewed. Nine volt battery fits perfectly right in the center. Let me remove the battery. Push that down. And let me give you a closer look at the board. You can see my board fit perfectly along the left side of the box. And over here is one of the 555 CMOSs and that's the other one. Over here is the connection for the potentiometer. And I added the power indicator which is nothing more than around 2K ohms going into the LED, a green one, and connecting to the battery negative. It's as simple as that. Everything will fit into the small box if you make it properly. Let me put it all back together, connect up my digital meter on the frequency range, and take a look at the output. I'm now going to turn on the unit, check the output frequency. This probe goes on the negative, connected to the LED, and the positive of the probe will touch the loop. Over here, you're going to see the reading in kilohertz. And you can see it was right around 764 kilohertz. Rotating the potentiometer would have adjusted that value up or down. The next thing I'm going to do is give you a quick demonstration of how well the circuit works. There's one more thing I wanted to mention to make life very easy to insert the wire inside of the pipe that you would like to locate. You can take a fish tape like you see here. This is very rigid. You can take that wire, nylon tie it onto this wire, and use this one to push inside the pipe that you would like to locate. By doing that, you don't have to worry about this wire bunching up as you're inserting it it will easily go into the pipe. For this demonstration, I have the wire laying on top of the lawn. I stacked up four pieces of marble, around four inches thick, which is around the same thickness as a slab. I covered both sides of the wire. I'm going to take the radio right here. I'm going to hold it at varying heights over the stones, and you're going to see the sound get louder coming off of the radio as I get closer to the center of the wire. When I bring it lower and lower, the signal will get stronger and stronger. It's very easy to use and very accurate. The first thing I'm going to do is turn on the circuit, make sure it's heard on the radio. I can adjust the radio or adjust the circuit until the tone is heard. The circuit is on, let me turn the radio on. You can hear that tone in the background. All right.
as you can see, it works extremely well. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.